This is going to be a demonstration of a milestone that I've reached recently with Worlds. If you don't know what Worlds is, you can go back on my channel and there's a couple of videos describing in detail what's actually going on. I've reached a milestone where I can actually show items being kept on chain. Um, there, the GUI opening and, I'll, and it being able to launch you into a game and then deposit your items inside. So that's my main goal of this video, to show how that works um, and how it will look in the future. So quickly I'm going to go over what Worlds actually is. So Worlds is a distributed MMO. So what that means is anyone can create a game, or as I call Worlds, and link them into a massive network of other worlds. And the reason why this is advantageous is for a networking effect. So many smaller games can end up being something much larger. Something maybe a little bit akin to the internet. Uh, my economic backbone allows players items, experience, and wealth to basically move with them throughout all of these worlds. And this is done using uh, blockchain. And specifically, I've chosen the EOS IO implementation um, because of its uh, speed and rapid finality. So there's basically six components to what's going on. The client side, which is what's run on a, run on a, uh, a user's computer. Um, the server side and the actual blockchain. So those are three different nodes on a network, a public network, and the world's engine is what connects everything basically. So I'm going to do a quick demonstration uh, of, how, of how that's actually going to work and how it's going to look. So to start, I'm going to start with the server side over here. However, for this demonstration, the server side and the blockchain side are going to be the same node. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and SSH into my local server. I've devised a little script to run the blockchain just called run chain. So this opened up a node OS instance um, and will accept connections and through you can use Cleos or you can use my um, my application. So let's go to wait now first I want to do this. Okay. This is server side as well. So once the blockchain is running, I also want to run the uh, server for the game. So that's this server engine from Game Developer. And this is the mind test server, which I've forked and modified to work with my stuff. password. The next thing I need to run is the world's engine, which is this here. And this is what the server engine is going to communicate with uh, to do key authentication, verification, and any sort of signing with private keys. So I'm going to run that. That's a node application. Um, and this is basically telling me that it's connected to this chain ID, uh, this endpoint, which is that computer, and uh, it's binded to some ports, and it's now listening uh, to uh, the mind test server. Now, there's one last thing I have to run. Really? Oh my goodness, okay. I'm sorry. Whoops. 
Uh, so this is managing the items in this world, basically. So that's all of this right here running. And I'm just going to move this white paper down and move some of these things out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and uh, run client-side applications. Mm. So this is the this is the engine for the client side. So it's a GUI because people are used to GUIs. Um, all the server side stuff is command line stuff. So as a player, I would open this up, enter my private key, public key, uh, point at the endpoint of the, the blockchain. That's your block producer and provide some sort of chain ID and then hit connect. And in the future, it will be like, you've connected properly rather than just not doing anything. Um, and the second little box is the world that you wish to connect to. So in the future, my vision is the player just walks to the edge of the map or goes through some portal or something and all of this kind of magically happens and you don't even have to think about this. But right now it's a more manual implementation just for testing purposes and getting the ball rolling. Uh, so my world is called Turnip Town. <laughs> the IP address is the same as the blockchain because they're running on the same node. Um, there's some ports that you have to fill in. Uh, and then this is the actual executable that's going to be run. So this is kind of the uh, meat and, meat and uh, bread of the whole thing. So the executable can be literally anything. It can be a Python script. It can be a, um, a Unity generated binary through C++ or whatever language they're using now. Um, and that's the whole, whole flexi flexibility of the universe. The game developer chooses exactly what he or she wants it to what the user experience can be and has boundless freedom on that. Uh, so right now in this folder, it's kind of hard to see, um, I have a folder called worlds and that has binaries inside of it. So when I hit this, it's gonna execute this binary. So let's hit it. Okay. Oh, well, it's nighttime. Hmm. So a lot of things just happened and I'm gonna take a second to quickly overview what actually just happened. So. When I hit that button, it launched an executable, which launched the game client, which is this. That connected to the server engine using whatever methods game developers want. The server engine, the game client, then sent a packet to the server engine uh, that was a signature, basically. This guy here. So it said, my name's Turnip, here's my pub key, here's some data, which is just Unix time concatenated with my name, and here's a proof package. So I've signed that with my private key. The server then gets that data and says, hey, World's Engine, is this really that person? And the World's Engine said yes, because it is me. And then I'm admitted to the game. So there's no passwords or any of that uh, stuff required. It's just all done through the actual EOS IO key system. So I'm in this game. I've been instantiated into this game. And now I want to move my items in. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to this item section. Now, an item in worlds is basically a hash that lives on a blockchain and a matching JSON file that is required to be kept by the player. So if I go in here, I have a bunch of JSON files here. And inside of these JSON files is data. So for instance, this is a wood sword. It has some war staked against it. I am the owner of it. Uh, and it has a hash. So if I go ahead and look on the blockchain, uh, again, I have to SSH. some scripts to make this easier. That's not what I want. So I've basically queried the blockchain for 
uh, some data. So what does turnip have? What hashes does he or she have? And if I go back to my items here, I have a wood sword, which is a weapon owned by me, created by me, and has some sort of genesis time and some stake against it. And the hash is 70, 80, etc. And that lives right there. So that's proof. So if I have that file, um, someone I can send that to someone. They can query the blockchain and be like, does this guy have this thing? If the hashes line up, then yes, I do. It's confirmed. So I'm going to go ahead and load my items in. So I have all the same items that was just listed on that this folder right here. Um, ignore null sword. Something went wrong. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Something went wrong. Uh, but I have a wood sword, a stone sword, and a diamond sword. So I want to move these into the game. So essentially, when you connect, that creates an FTP user account for you. So all you have to do to move these items into the game that you're playing is move them into a folder on the server. So if I, uh, where's server? This guy here. So here on the home directory, there's a folder called players, and inside there's a folder named turnip, and there's a folder called experience and items. So if I if I take my FTP credentials that were given to me during login, I can then move files into those folders, and if I move those JSON files in, they'll be instantiated into the world that I'm playing right now. Um, because the world server takes those, proves they're real, and says, okay, this person owns this, let's give it to him in the game. So let's do that. Um, I'm not actually going to open up an FTP client because it's a bit easier than that. Uh, you can do that directly through the engine. So I'm going to go ahead and select Stone Sword. And I'm going to go ahead and hit, hit Deposit here. So that's showed up in my account in-game. So I now have a Stone Sword here that I can do things with. And that extends to all of the items in the universe. You can just go ahead and deposit. I'll put, let's put the Wood Sword in. Ooh, now I have a wood sword. Good. Um, in the future, you won't actually have to hit deposit. The idea is the entire transition from world to world will be seamless. So you'll just move into another world and you'll just have all of your items. Uh, but for now, as I said earlier, the process is quite manual just because we're I'm in the early stages. Um, yeah, so if you made it to this point, that means you watched the whole video or fast forwarded it. Anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, I appreciate any support or questions or anything. I've been working on this for about a year and a half now, uh, part-time. I still work full-time. So if there's, yeah, any inf any anybody wants to give any feedback or has any questions, I welcome all of that. Thanks for watching.